It is another hot and sunny day here in Hoi An and it feels good to be back. This place is really known for its ancient town tailoring and a few other things, but one of the main reasons we love coming here is for the food. So we're gonna skip all the quaintness and culture right now and head basically straight to what we think is the epicenter of food here in Hoi An. This is the epicenter of food here. Just kidding, it's this well. The name of it is Bale. They said that the well was dug back in the 10th century, but there's some records that date it back to as early as the 8th or 9th century. But anyway, it's called the Bale, apparently because there was a lady named Miss Lei, or Lee, L-E, and she spent, at the time, 100 Indochina coins to restore the well, so they named it after her. Now, the significance of the well is because this water is, is used to make the cow lao noodle. What makes the cow lao noodle so special is the water that comes from this well is mixed with the ashes from some trees from another island to create a lye solution. And that is what makes the cow lao noodle different than other noodles that you may try. It's definitely a local specialty and one we'll get to a little bit later in the video, but this well to us is kind of the pulse of the city. So we definitely wanted to pay it some respect and start off here. Next on our list, because that definitely made me hungry, is a little banh mi place that is very special to Hoi An and kind of the whole banh mi culture altogether. It kind of got popularized for, from Anthony Bourdain visiting while he was doing his show on the Travel Channel. In the wake of his recent passing, we're gonna go get a banh mi to celebrate him. We got the mixed bread on me. It's delicious. It's a little peppery, but it's good. But a little secret to this place. If you come in the front, you see a line. It's pretty long. It's because everybody's getting takeaway bombies. You can always sit on the inside. They have a bunch of seating downstairs and upstairs. You don't have to wait in the line. You'll have a waiter that'll come take your order, bring it directly to your table. But this place is busy and you're just frustrated and you're saying, Damn the line, I'm gonna go somewhere else. There's another place called Bami Queen, which is equally as good. It tastes completely different though. I'm gonna tell you guys out in advance. So my biggest suggestion, come here, try this one, then go to the Bami Queen, try that one, make a call yourself. Two different sandwiches, but you don't want them to be the same. The sandwich recipe will differ from hand to hand. There's a few different ways of getting around Hoi An. Our favorite by far has to be a bike. We did not bike last time we were here, last time we walked around. And while everything's not necessarily too far from one another, when you combine exercise with some of this tropical heat, it gets brutal. So having a bike is definitely a lifesaver. Not so to mention, it's gonna save you time and you can kind of window shop through all the dresses and suits and everything like that without having to get haggled. So it's a great way to kind of quickly scan the city to then see where you want to park your bike, hop off, and explore a little bit more. Something that you'll notice when you're walking around in the ancient quarter or really anywhere in the city, it is littered with coffee shops. So a great thing to do to step away from the heat is to stop in, get out of the sun, and get yourself some coffee. So we're gonna get perked up right now with a cup of coffee, but this isn't your average cup of coffee. It this has is, an egg in it. This is a Vietnamese egg coffee. Basically what they do is they take one egg, they add condensed milk to it, and then they use an electric blender mixer to then whisk the shit out of it. If you're wondering if it tastes anything like egg, it doesn't. It just tastes like cake and a lot of sugar. It tastes like a cappuccino, but it also tastes like there's a, like a cake batter on top or something like that, heavy on the egg yolk. It's good, 
but I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's probably not the best thing to drink when it's boiling outside. So we ditched the bikes and we're currently walking up to the Japanese covered bridge. It's located in the ancient city. So this is kind of the big hoorah, the main reason why people come here. It's been extremely well preserved and it's ancient. And we're here. The reason that this Japanese bridge is so popular is because it was built by the Japanese to link the Japanese community with the Chinese old quarter. That was flattened out at some point, I'm not really sure when, by the French, but then in, I believe, 18 or 1986, they restored it to its original Japanese art coveredness. There's a lot of different cultures that are here in Hoi An. You'll see Chinese writing, Japanese writing. There's also French influence here, so. Portuguese. Yeah, there's a lot of history here in this town and you can actually go into some of the older buildings that have been maintained, but they have not used any new products like concrete or iron or anything like that. So they still use wood to keep everything preserved. Super excited because last time we were here we sat down for some cow lao and I got this delicious tea. I don't remember the name of it, but I know it had like 800 different spices in it and it's phenomenal. We just walked by the shop, we had some, it was 10,000 so we bought it. Not only does it look cool, it is cool, you feel cool drinking it and it cools you down. They almost serve it with an ice that's kind of a slushy consistency so look at it as like a healthy 7-Eleven slushy. I'm not gonna lie, the vibe here is pretty straightforward. There's a ton of shopping, it's a lot of old buildings and history to look at. There's a few museums. And a lot of eating and drinking. You almost feel like you're on a movie set. It's unbelievably cute. All the buildings are yellow. There's lanterns strung everywhere. Yeah, there's art shops where you can buy different types of art. There's different types of handicrafts. There's Leathers. so yeah. many shops where you can get clothes. Whether you want them custom made or you can just buy them yourself. That is a huge thing in Hoi An. Alright, this is the part where it gets interesting. The sun's starting to go down, the restaurant vendors are starting to come out. We're about to show you where the best Kao Lao noodle dishes in the city. We came here last year and we went by the riverside, the river walk, and there were these vendors that were setting up that had not only amazing Kao Lao, but also this really, really good tea. So we're gonna head down there right now, see if it's twerking, and show you one of those must try places when you're here in Hoi An. <laughs> out here in full force we are in luck I once again come to the river there's all kinds of little benches set up that are serving cow lao and the famous tea that we like if you're wondering where it's located it's right along the riverfront and you want to look for a sign that looks just like this this is why we keep coming back and I basically took you all to ground zero today the whole foundation of the noodle itself this is one of those dishes which I, I think it might be my favorite in all of Vietnam. It all starts with the noodle, which I've heard grabs its consistency because it's steamed, not boiled. So it's almost a little bit firmer, it tastes like a mushroom. Not only does it have the thin, tender pieces of pork and the crunchy pork, but it also has these amazing herbs and greens added in, which give it that zing, that peppery and earthy kind of taste mixed in with the sweetness of the sauce and the saltiness of the pork and just the unique flavor of the cow lao noodle itself. There's also a sweet pepper addition on the side, which is almost like a jelly. I mean, it's just flavors for days. It does not stop. Every bite that I take, as soon as I think I've put my finger on the taste and had it figured it out, another flavor just comes and pimp slaps my taste buds. My biggest piece of advice to you is come to the street and get your cow lao. Don't go to the restaurants. Jen and I went to a fancy restaurant last year and I think we ended up spending like 50 to 70 thousand dong on the same bowl that we got here which was much better for 30 thousand. So come to the street, come by the river, come to this particular stand and don't forget to grab one of these teas. You'll be all set. Hoi 
Poyan really transforms at night and turns into basically a lantern festival. Now they do have lantern festivals that have official dates and it's supposedly even more colorful than this. But if you happen to be here on a night where the lantern festival isn't going on, you will not be disappointed. Instagram lovers paradise. Lifesaver. 